So glad I got coffee. What up team? Very nice to have you aboard as always. Today we're going to be talking Shadow DOM, custom elements, web components generally, React, Preact, JSX, all that good stuff. Stick around, I'm sure it's going to be fascinating. But before we get into anything, of course, over the top intro. Okay, so a couple of days ago, I saw this tweet uh, that was talking about how web components and React were incompatible, or it seemed to imply they were incompatible in some way. And I thought, nah, they're not. There's maybe a difference of approach or attitude in some ways, but they're very much okay to be used together. So I thought I'd talk about that a little bit. The other thing I've noticed is that there can be a lot of confusion within the web community about when you should use custom elements or shadow DOM or uh, web components and people feeling like they're not quite sure what's what in that world. So I thought, again, I'd deal with some of that today. So firstly, custom elements. Essentially, instead of using a div, a custom element lets you use your own element instead. It lets you define your own element, and the only requirement of that element is that it has to have a dash in its name. Otherwise, it's an unknown element. By having a dash in its name, so like my dash element, then you can be sure that it is, in fact, a custom element, or it can be a custom element. So that's it. Basically, it's like I would have used a div. Now I'm going to use my own custom element. And when I'm coding that in JavaScript land, I can, instead of passing an element to work on or creating one on the fly, I just put the markup in the HTML, uh, put the class definition in my JavaScript, and when I'm writing it, I extend HTML element and I refer to whatever APIs I need to on my own element, like this dot append child, for example, will append a child to my custom element. In terms of support, it's actually pretty good and getting better, and the polyfill is small and very effective, does its job. Not a problem there, really. Now, the next one is Shadow DOM, and that's more complicated if you did the full rundown. I'm not going to do the full rundown today. I'm just going to give you my little take on how I use it, my approach to it. Uh, there's plenty of documentation if you want to kind of go deeper, and I'll try and link some of that below in the description, as always. Shadow DOM, as I like to think of it, helps you contain the gross. Because you know when you're making some kind of element, you have markup and styles and bleh. and really you just want to kind of wrap it all together and go yeah it's it's a thing it's it's my element it's a carousel it's a an infinite scroll it's my element don't worry about the details i'm hiding that inside that's what shadow dom is really there to let you do and the main functions that it provides is scoping for styles so if you have some style uh, tag inside, style element inside, uh, the styles will only apply up to the shadow DOM boundary. So anything inside the shadow DOM will get styled, anything outside of it, those styles will be ignored. So you get a nice encapsulation there. The other thing that it lets you do is it lets you remap events. And that doesn't sound like something that's all that interesting to begin with. But imagine this, you've got all these divs and the gross that you've contained inside and you've got event handles like, oh, when I click this or whatever, I want it to do something else. I want to dispatch some event in my app. I want my element to dispatch some, I don't know, a wobble event. Sure, you can call it wobble if you like. That's not a problem. What Shadow DOM is going to let you do, it's going to let you capture from the shadow root that there was a click event, and it's going to let you remap that and then fire out a new different event. So what happens is the original event, the click event, gets held at the shadow DOM boundary and it stops there. It doesn't bubble up like all the other normal events, which is what you'd have. Typically in your DOM, if I click, that event bubbles all the way up to the document root and anybody who needs to listen to it can listen to it if they're in that chain of parents. Well, with the shadow DOM, it stops. And so that's actually a good point for you as a developer to step in and go, aha, I have a better plan. I'm going to change that click event to something that means something in the context of my element. Wobble, whatever, foo, bar, baz, bam, woohoo, whatever you need to call your event. I'm not judging. I've come up with some of the best worst event names ever. That's the web. That's me. Enjoy. And then you can dispatch that on up and your app can now listen to more uh, semantically meaningful events than just click. So there's good news and there's bad news for Shadow DOM. The good news is that 
Uh, its support is okay. It's available in Chrome. It's very close to shipping, I think, in Firefox. Edge have just announced that they are going to support it or they're working on it. Safari, I think, has it as well. I'll double check. If they don't, I'll put that in the description. I should check, I'll check. The other thing is though, it's one of those features that's almost impossible to polyfill. There's the Shady Dom polyfill from the, uh, the Polymer team, which is as close as you're gonna get without causing significant performance issues. Uh, the first version of the polyfill that they created, uh, it was, I think it was more feature complete, but it had performance challenges because of the way that they had to make it work. It's just one of those features that's really difficult to fake in the browser until you get the for reals version. Okay, so back to that tweet. Here's some thoughts. If your whole team is using React or Angular, it may make sense for you to create your components in that way. After all, you've got a, a switching point where you're sort of thinking, is this a custom element or a web component or is it not? And it might just be easier for you to stick in one sort of paradigm or model and go all the way to the end. And if everything's a React component, well, okay, fine. However, if you're in a, a mixed shop, as in you've got some people on Angular, or some people on React, some people on Vue, some people who go vanilla, the web component model sh paradigm thing is the only one that you've got that's across all those different approaches. And so it gives you a way of saying, well, you can just reuse my component now. There you go. That's, it's it's, um, it's a, an image carousel or it's a video player. Uh, do feel free to use it wherever you need. All you need to do is include the styles and the JavaScript, or maybe just the JavaScript if you put the styles inside. That's a whole separate conversation about uh, CSS and JavaScript. We'll go there another time. We'll stay where we are for now. So then where does that leave? Preact or React or, or all these things if you do want to do the component reuse. Well, you can treat them as a really, really exceptional way of doing diffing or taking state and converting it into DOM. But instead of using divs as your sort of final output target, you just render web components. If you've got somebody else's third party web component or you've got something from another team, it becomes incredibly powerful just to be able to say, here's the component, but I'm going to use one of these other things as the glue. One of these uh, libraries, frameworks, depends on how you view them, um, as my way of tying all these components together. And so without further ado, let me show you how Preact and custom elements can be combined. On my screen, I have an element that extends HTML element, and I've called it my element. Mmm, production ready. Now inside my element, I have attached a shadow root, and I'm just attaching it as a property of this uh, class called root. I also create a message inside a div that says custom element, and then I, in the connected callback, which is the lifecycle callback that says, by the way, this element got attached to the DOM, I append the message to the shadow root. I'll come back in a moment and I'll show you about the event stuff. At the bottom here, there's a custom elements.define, which is this global that you find in the window that lets you define what uh, tag it's looking for and when it finds said tag, what it should instantiate, which in this case is my element. Over here in Preact land, I have a bit of code that's, I mean, I'm quite literally pulling in Preact as the module here and then just calling class app extends the component from the Preact model and I am just rendering out, I mean, I'm rendering out a div here, but I have my element as one of the elements that is being rendered out by Preact. And that's about the size of it. So over here on my screen, I have hello world, which came from sort of raw Preact land in the JSX. And I have custom element, which came from my element. Over here in the elements panel inside of DevTools, you can see I have this div, the span from Preact, and then here we are, here's my element, and you can see the shadow root that got appended. And inside there is the custom element div that I added. So I've contained the gross, always a good idea. But what now of that event stuff that I talked about before, containing some of that gross? That's an interesting one. Let's step back into my element over here. Here's the add event listener call that I call when I construct this element first time around. What I do is I say on the root itself, on my shadow root, I'd like to add an event listener and I'm gonna listen for clicks inside of the root. 
When I do that, I actually create a new custom event, which is a, a, like any other event, except I can add a detail to it. And in the detail, I have this message that says wobble and some styling for the console, just because why not? And then I dispatch this custom event called wobble. And here it is, this dot dispatch event, and then I pass it the event. And this will dispatch a wobble event. Well, what do we do with this inside of the JSX? Glad you asked, here's the answer. What we can do, because of the way that uh, Preact works, and I think React is the same. Okay, so I'm editing this video and I'm thinking, I should just double check that React works in the same way as Preact when it comes to custom events, and it doesn't. Uh, it's slightly different. The thing to bear in mind is that you're gonna have to do add event listener and stuff with ref. Actually stick around, because there's a website I'm gonna show at the end by Rob Dodson, uh, which covers actually you know a lot of the details involved here. Nonetheless, I still think you can make it all work. There's nothing problematic here. You might just not do it, as in if you're thinking, oh, I'll just stick with React. Sure, fair enough. But if you are in a place where you either want the interop that you get from web components, or you've got a group of you know people who some are using Vue, some are using Angular, and so on, it still is a really good idea to consider web components. So let's carry on. You can say on wobble. So when you get an on blah. So if you dispatch an event called blah, you'd have on blah. I've dispatched an event called wobble, and so I get on wobble. I'm not sure I should be allowed to write code. Whatever. So when it fires, we get uh, detail.m and detail.s, which comes from my element. So detail.m is just this percent %c wobble. Percent %c is the way that you get the styling in. Little pro tip there. And detail.s is the way that you set those styles. So I'm basically setting wobble with that. And I've got bubbles true so that it can bubble up through the DOM. So it's gonna start at my element and it's gonna bubble up. So what's happened? The event was the click event happens inside the shadow root, bubbles up to the shadow root boundary. We pick it up here, we to turn it into this wobble event, this click event, and we dispatch it again back out. And so we've converted and made what was just a generic click event into something that is specific to our application. Now, does that work? Yes, it does. Let me show you that running. So if I just click, now you can see in the console, I see wobble as a surprisingly large red piece of text. So let me close out by pointing out Rob Dodson's excellent website, Custom Elements Everywhere. That's his project to make sure frameworks and custom elements can be BFFs. He's basically gone through uh, and added a bunch of tests about how the two should work together, whether it's whatever the framework is and custom elements. And if they don't work, he explains why and what's going on and he opens issues. Just a generally phenomenal mashup of those two worlds. So if you've not seen this site before, go ahead and check it out. So with that said, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Do click the thumbs up if you have it. It helps me a load. Subscribe if you haven't already. And if you have subscribed, thank you. I really appreciate every single one of you. Don't forget you can click the notification bell if you want to get notified when I upload one of these videos. I try and do it weekly. If you'd like me to go to a regular schedule, do let me know as well. I mean, I'm happy to try and lock in. Um, but if you like the slightly random, as I'm currently doing, then either don't say anything or let me know that as well. And as always, folks, I will catch you on the flip side. New camera!